Hey Gabby, you've called in amazing women in the Los Angeles community. Oh my god, yes, Jamie. I want to know more about how they made it. Yes, right? They're real stories. Where the idea for their business came from, how they invested in it, how they got their clients. I think this is a podcast. Well, fairy godmother, you're hosting it. Do you <laughs> dream about me? We are so excited to have Marta Sievenhaar here today with us. Marta is part of our Las Commodities community and she is an inspiring and amazing woman up to big things. We are thrilled to be able to share with you what she has learned today. So welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming. So can you give us a little bio on Marta? <laughs> sure. <laughs> So long story short, I'm a classically trained professional musician who ended up doing strategic planning, so business development and strategy, and I ended up doing what I'm doing now, which is I have my own company called Cultured Innovations, and we bring creativity into the lives of people and businesses. So a lot of times that looks like creative people getting more businessy and business people getting more creative. So we don't use our imaginations much and we're responding to what's around us rather than creating and putting ourselves on a path to success. Awesome. So, okay. How did you get from I'm working in business to this? <laughs> well, I, I came up through the arts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, creative expression and teamwork and collaboration are always things that have inspired me personally. Um, I have a master's degree in orchestral performance. I love the idea that you make something together you can't make alone. And basically, I took a nonlinear path to where I am now, which was a lot of learning, uh, not being afraid to try new things, mm -hmm. and um, editing along the way. So I guess in human-centered design, they call it iteration. Yeah. But I think just knowing what, what makes you tick and letting go of things like what you think you're supposed to do or what other people expect of you and really finding your authentic voice, your authentic path. And I'm a creator. Yes. Not a recreator, which is why orchestral music wasn't really my thing, <laughs> although I love it still. And uh, a bunch of my friends and, and mentees um, and mentors continue to be in that field. Nice. So with the newest creation, is it easier to work with the creatives that need more businessy or the businessy that need more creatives? Creativity. Well, that's a great question. Um, what I love about what I'm up to now is that I've always been somebody really interested in people and variety. And so now I don't have to choose. I get to choose the kind of work I, I do, the projects I take on, the people I want to add value to. So for me, it's a very um, human, like the humans are at the center of it. Mm -hmm. So it, it usually, I guess it's not like a linear thing. Again, like I, Things come to me and people introduce me and I'm, I'm just fascinated by people and what makes them tick. So it's a good mix. And, you know, it's everything from helping put together a conference or an unconference to help diversify the field of venture capital to creating an online 30 day challenge about radical receiving, which I can talk about a little bit more later. But oh, let's just talk about that. <laughs> I love the radical receiving. So what is the 30 day challenge for radical receiving about? So in November, I'm going to be doing um, an online challenge because I, in my work, and again, like I'm interested in humans and how we get in our own way. And being a classically trained musician, definitely there's like a, there's a mental thing and a, and a confidence thing. And you, you know, learning your own voice and, and trusting that and sticking to it and having a process to actually move through your own blocks is what I'm all about. So one block that I've noticed lately is that people have trouble receiving. They want to give and give, or they're told like you're selfish if you don't do this or that, but receiving is really a natural part of life mm -hmm. and you can only breathe out so long. So I started changing my own mind and I'm, I'm not afraid to experiment. This is the fun thing about being, <laughs> being, a, being a musician, being an artist. Like the whole thing is iteration. The whole thing is getting as wildly explorative as possible. It's not necessarily something that I ask my clients to do, but we normally get through through this, get there through this kind of like organic play. Right. So I start playing with ideas myself and then I share them and they seem to resonate. So 
just uh, something I've noticed about receiving, especially women, we're told that we're bad or we're not generous or uh, people will judge us. We're just afraid of really owning that breathing in and receiving these as natural as breathing out. So it kind of organically came about, but I'm living in my own life and I've shared a couple nuggets with people and they're like, oh, you should put this together and make a thing. So yes. I'm going to be making a thing. So I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, it's just such a natural thing. And we, the thing I find over and over is that we're all wanting the same things out of life and we're all going through the same challenges, but we think we're alone and we think we're different and, and really we're all human beings and we want to, we want to be happy and we want to be prosperous and we want to have fun, mm -hmm. have great relationships and, and really live life to the fullest. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that complicated, no. but that's where we get in our own way. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So one thing someone shared with me once was that if you are not willing to receive, then you are denying the other person the gift of giving. Oh, for sure. And I was like, oh, that makes it easier. Like, right. it's like, oh, all right, that's like a big shift in like, oh, they're giving and I can receive and that's like a gift to them as well. And so the idea that you're never going to receive means that you're always denying other people. That's right. And being a musician... You know, music school teaches you to be really critical all the time. And those are things that you begin to practice in your life. But it's kind of extreme when you're at the end of a performance. People come up to you and you're like, oh, I just really loved your playing. And you just doubt that they're even real. Like you're, <laughs> you're denying them the opportunity to like give you the gift of a compliment. Right. Because you're so in your head or so, you know, feeling like that couldn't possibly be true that you don't even trust the gift. <laughs> so I totally am all about what you're saying. And sometimes actually when you receive a gift, um, it helps other people. Yeah. Which is another thing that, that we are not really taught and we don't practice very often. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm very excited for this challenge. <laughs> November? November. November. I will be the first one to sign up. <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> so. When you shifted into this business, what was the, the starting goal? What were you looking for? It's so funny. I was looking for an opportunity to focus, even though I know variety is my thing. So, and the reason is, and this is the reason I was good at strategic planning, is strategic planning is about kind of like gathering information, mm -hmm. lots of it, and then finding the nuggets that just make sense or the patterns that somehow my brain sees them and connects them with other things in a really untraditional, non-traditional creative way. Right. So I realized that creativity is my thing. So transitioning to this, um, this role, this business full time has been a lot about, you know, gathering information and making those connections. So I'm going to allow myself to be a little, kind of like messy and unstructured in terms of like a specific focus for now uh, for, for the first year. But the initial thing was like, how can I add value to people doing good stuff and yeah. to, to really, yeah, just help them do their business better because I work with a lot with social impact makers and if you, if they can make a bigger impact, a bigger social impact, then they're impacting more people in a deeper way. That's yeah. something that I can totally get behind and I feel really good about. But I'm also creating my own thing on the side. So it's kind of like serving and learning. And by doing both of those things, um, I learn, which is, I feel like my job now is to learn, which is awesome. It's so great. <laughs> it's a great job. <laughs> I know. Uh, and then to, to find the discoveries and those connections, again, by doing lots of things um, and adding value because I, my purpose is to, to help people, right? Right. But along the way, because I get to learn, I can see things in a way that when you're in something, you can't see, you know, being a consultant, being a coach, you're on the outside and you can see patterns and you can see those connections or the things that, you know, the solutions that they might not be able to see and to be able to provide that, but not be in it full time. There's just something about it that gives me so much energy. Um, and then going on to the next plan, I get so much satisfaction and energy from working with people doing this amazing stuff but not having to actually be inside it. Right. Um, Cause I, I like freedom. I like variety and, and that that's where I'm thriving. So it's been great. The transition has been amazing and I can't believe it took me this long. So. <laughs> and it's always so good to know yourself, yeah. right? Like know that you like that, know that you like the different, like, Oh, I like to come in and then I like to go out and then I like to come into somewhere else. 
and then being able to like link a lot of those different people together. Yeah, it's like finding the threads of creativity because when you see when you see something and you're up close, you don't notice how you could be seeing it differently or that there's an opportunity right here. And again, it's nice to be on the outside because you do have that perspective. But in, in the end, the whole thing, the reason I like variety, the reason I like this kind of like service-oriented work um, is that we get to play. We get to have our, our imaginations at work. We get to create together, create something new and get out of the thinking that is limiting. It's so good. It's so fun. It's like, it's such a great space for you to be in and to be able to like take it to the other people. Is there resistance to the fun at work? <laughs> Is there resistance well, to the creativity at <laughs> work? People, people want to be more creative. It's something that they, they seek out and they want to do, but they don't necessarily have a grounding for it. So that's where being a professional musician you don't just go in the practice room and create. You, there's like a process you go through. And the same thing is true for any art form. You have, you know, if you're a professional dancer, you take class and you, you stretch. Like you're not going to do a, right. a new choreography or <laughs> whatever it is without, you know, going through the process through which you can access new levels of things. So really what I do is I help people get there through a process. Mm -hmm. And ordinarily it's something that is, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the classroom early in my career. and you can't go from the objective to the finished, you know, outcome. You have to kind of like structure and scaffold these activities that go one into the other. Do a lot of facilitation work. And really what it is, is I'm imagining if we want to get here and feel a certain way at the end of it, what are the activities that we could do that get us there? Because when people show up and you're doing a, you know, corporate retreat or a board retreat or something, they're not ready to play when they show up. No. <laughs> but um, I have enough experience now um, with a whole wide variety of groups from kids to, you know, um, a mixed group of people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, to really understand how, how can I move people through this creative space where they're primed and they're ready, maybe a little uncomfortable, but that makes it open for what's to follow. And I give them license and say, like, listen, what you put into this with your imagination is what you're going to get out of it. And some people who you would not imagine, like, really go there. And they, <laughs> they totally surprise themselves. And they surprise even people in the room who know them really well. So that's, that's always something that I feel like is, is a big success, is getting people so out of their normal lives, their normal thinking, their normal ways of being, giving them the license to play and a way to do it that they can be successful at. Um, it's kind of like the, the secret sauce. So. So fun. <laughs> it's so fun. And it's such an interesting, like, the thought process behind it, right? Like, oh, I want to get you all the way to this end point. And then, like, what is the, like, beginning, middle, and end look like and how to get there? Do you have to shift during a lot? Yeah. And that's the thing that I love about facilitating because it's kind of messy and it's not linear, uh, which is, like, the creative process. So when right. I talk about my career, I talk about, you know, my first year of entrepreneurship. It's... It really is nonlinear. It's a space to kind of like experiment and play and see. But um, I think what makes me different from a lot of facilitators is that I'm very in tune with people when I start to facilitate. I don't just facilitate based on what's on our agenda. So right. I think about the agenda, but I also think about how I want and how the client wants people to feel at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So it just has an added dynamic that, you know, I'm not just going to do the thing on paper. There is a sense of connection and the sense that the group is bonding and like the, the room gets smaller and we kind of come to a greater sense of empathy and connection because through the, the process, sculpting that process, people start to hear their own words out of somebody else's mouth. Yeah. And so I love that. That's my favorite part. <laughs> so who are your typical clients? Like, who are you working with to sort of get to this end goal? Sure. Uh, well, I have a series I do in the community called Creative Jams. Mm -hmm. So I started those at Venture Cafe, and sometimes I do them out in other venues. And that idea is that's open to anybody who just wants to have a moment. Some people have actually called it self-care where they're thinking about something that they don't ordinarily give themselves license to think about mm -hmm. the ability to, you know, have space away from normal life to play. And then also I work with corporate clients. So mm -hmm. I do a lot of, I worked with the university client, um, uh, last month we did a, you know, two day retreat with 
the faculty chairs. Mm -hmm. And you know, they have a new strategic plan. So it's kind of like, how are we going to get on the same page? And, and how can we then you know, set ourselves up for success, not only doing things that are required on paper, but also as a team, a group of human beings, we're headed in the same direction, even though we're not in the same you know, cars or whatever. Right? <laughs> Um, so it really varies. And I've worked with some corporate clients just doing creativity. Um, a lot of people like look at Google, Google is a company that values creativity and there's no, there's no secret to that being a good thing. So, but again, most people don't know how to do it. So I come in and, and I work with teams and I, I help them access things that they might not otherwise know how to use do or to come to together because a lot of it is strategy but it's also about bonding and team building and that kind of thing so so do you do it over like a period of time or you just like come in and go out it depends on what the client wants mm -hmm. and you know i'm i'm not so structured that i'm not willing to play with a, a client like right. we i always want the best result for for their vision because all of my work is vision driven you can't be an artist and not right. know <laughs> know what the ultimate vision is um, but it depends on what people want. You know, some clients I come in and peri periodically or every six months or every quarter, we come in and we have a check-in. And that's the thing about strategic thinking. Like strategy is only as good as you're willing to kind of like do it often yeah. and recalibrate. My strategic planning clients, I have a number of those as well. It's kind of like the point isn't just the plan. The point is like, how do you play with it as it, you know, because it gets messy when real life happens and like the thing that on paper made sense, yeah, maybe doesn't work anymore. But yeah. it just the flexibility of it. Flexibility. How to how to like teach people to have a little bit more flexibility. Right. When and, when things go slightly awry. Right. And to think about how so my thing is success on purpose. So how or practical creativity. I'm actually trademarking that term. So <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's not just set it and forget it. It's how do you continue to have to know what you're going for and how to get there and have conversations with it. There's not enough of that kind of conversation happening. Yeah. You can even do that with your family. Like where are we as a family? What's our, what's our vision? Like what are our markers of success? How are we all going to, you know, come together and like assess how we're, how we're doing? Is there enough light? Like what are our values? And then you check in on those things. So it can be really fun, even yeah. if it's like a super businessy thing. And what I find also, you can apply business principles to everyday life and to, to people, to relationships. And yeah, again, my brain doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know, like everybody's. That's why we need your brain <laughs> to show us all the ways. Um, so on the Commodities podcast, we're always talking about like how it happens, right? So how are you finding your clients? Where are they coming from? Any good marketing tips for anyone else out there? <laughs> uh, well, I'm finding that I'm I'm really good at helping other people with strategy um, and I'm learning how to do it for myself because I I'm finding I don't tell my my own story and I've tapped into a lot of like my accountability group is amazing awesome uh, have a super marketing brain genius in, in my group Madeline and she uh, she helps me so much with understanding you know all of all of the things um, my work has been primarily organic so client mm -hmm. to clients or just direct re referrals based on past clients so I haven't done a lot of marketing mm -hmm. but now with the 30 day challenge you know I want more people to know about it than just people on my email list so right. I'm doing some uh, some experiments growing my list and um, just like anything I'm, I'm experimenting with and seeing what happens but my goal overall is that you know we're we're working to help each other no matter you know who we are we're in miami we're creative people so the world we're women you know the world yeah. is our oyster in, in terms of that but i really believe that the more we can be championing each other, championing each other and celebrating each other and helping each other find uh, opportunities the better and there's a lot of that happening in the group um i know that you know i've i've referred some opportunities and and also i mean we believe in the same things we yeah. We are a group that is very much in harmony, I think, with what we're all wanting to create. And Miami and the world is not only big enough, but stronger because of us being able to share the space, come together, and have this unifying vision. I think it's pretty awesome. It is. I love the way you think big. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if a year from now you could have whatever you want, what would you create?
Well, I feel like in a lot of ways I already have created some of the most amazing things I never imagined I would have in my life. Um, <laughs> so experiments have been good. Um, I think probably a sense that, again, we're all the same mm -hmm. and that we're, we're okay to, to be vulnerable and to be brave. That's another thing. We're not brave because we're afraid of people judging us. We're afraid we're going to get it wrong mm -hmm. or we're afraid of failing. And that that means something. I was thinking on the way over here, like your failures have nothing to do with who you are. No, your failures are not really failures because it's about learning. And if you're learning, you're always learning and it doesn't stop. Yeah. So you're not really done until you're done. So failure is a word some people like to use. I like to say experiment. So but the things you see as like something that has hold, held you back or that you're ashamed of, like these are the things that make you stronger to give you the wherewithal to be where you are, to take up your space and to be yourself. And when we stop apologizing for who we actually are, because who we are, again, receiving that we are okay, we're good, and in fact, we're valuable. Um, when you start to see yourself in that way, your, your life, your career, your friendships, your relationships, they all get deeper. So I don't know that I answered the question, but <laughs> I like the answer. Um, but yeah, if, like with all the, the idea of failure that, you know, you're the only one, it's only you that it happens to, right? right? And like when you see other people's failures, you always look at it in this way that's like, not nearly as big of a deal as what, we, what happens to you. Right. And when you see somebody else sharing their story and being honest and vulnerable, it opens your heart. Yeah. So why is that? Because there's something we see in that that we relate to. So, you know, sharing of yourself is a generous gift. Yes. And when you're taking in somebody else's story and your heart is opening, you are receiving a gift and giving a gift. Yes. So again, receiving. Receiving. In one year, you are going to have all the people receiving. <laughs> Everyone I will receive. I would love for this world to be abundant and to, because it already is, but people don't realize it. Yeah. So, yeah, awakening greater, greater sense of connection, greater sense of love, greater sense of unity. Um, yeah, just uplifting people because we're all the same. In the end, when we peel away the skin, the biology is the same, and we all want to go for the same thing. Yeah. Um, so what are some ideas of things you'd like to build in the future? What are you making happen? I'd like to build a group of people who know they're powerful. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is happening in the group. Right. Um, people who are not afraid to take risks and who are willing to embrace play. This is how children learn. There's like Montessori education is all about like learning through play. Yeah. We forget when we're, once we know the rules and we know how to line up in straight lines and we know what we're supposed to do, you know, we forget that we have an imagination. So I would like a, a, to help build a group of woke imagination people, right? Yes. Let's awaken the imaginations. Cause really when you think about it, the only people limiting us are us. Yes, and that's because we're in life, thinking about life, responding to life, rather than thinking, like, what's my vision? What do I really stand for? What am I here for? Who are the people who are aligned with that? So creating a movement of people who are, you know, awakening their imaginations and living the thing that they don't know may exist because they haven't dreamed it up yet. Yes. But getting to that imagination and then taking steps toward it. Because you know what? Your best friend at one time is a stranger. Yes. So the unknown actually has some room. So. Exactly. So the role of community in the commodities we try to use, the role of community is like what is kind of carrying each one of us along, building higher and higher. And a big part of that is asking for help. How, mm. <laughs> how do you feel like the, ask, the practice of asking for help is you know in your life as well as like what are you seeing as you're presenting out there to you know is that a hard piece for people well i just read a blog last month <laughs> called white it's time to get over asking for help <laughs> and medium actually picked it up and said can we publish this in our entrepreneur um nice portion of the of our website so um yeah so this is a very universal thing and i only i feel like 
my own life has been again nonlinear, but like I've learned so much and been so humbled by what I've learned along the way. Like I thought in high school, I knew who I was and this is what I stood for. And that was it. And then I had experiences in my life where I completely reinvented myself, challenged myself, became somebody else. And then from that data, I feel like I understand more where I'm going, what I'm all about. So when it comes to um, the question of community, I used to be such a person who needed to do it myself. I am an experiential learner. We all are. Right. Once you do it, you know, right? So if you've never built a business, you build a business and then you know. Exactly. (laughs) Um, And, you know, a whole variety. Like, unless you're in a great relationship, maybe you don't know how to have one. Right. It's something that you can do. And again, you have to go into the unknown for that. But this, the role of community is so important because we're not, again, like the whole point of the unity I was talking about is like, we're all, we're all human beings wanting the same thing. So community and asking for help is kind of a natural part of it, but you also have to recognize you're not alone Mm -hmm. and that better things can happen when you let go of some degree of control or you invite other people to contribute to you again, receiving. Yes. A lot of us have trouble like allowing people to contribute to us. Yeah. We have a we have a thing where that's not okay or we feel But we're okay contributing to them. Correct. <laughs> so it's like again, it's not it's not a, a, a balanced thing. But yeah, community is so huge and community is what makes everything happen. Because name one thing, really think about it. Name one thing that came into your life devoid of a person. Yeah, that's basically impossible. Basically impossible. <laughs> so when we stop thinking about networking as I'm taking or I feel icky or I'm promoting myself mm-hmm. and you're like, I get to meet people I can contribute to, which again, we're, we're a lot better at doing. Yes. <laughs> but what are the people and the, the things that they're working on? What are their passions that might inspire or awaken something in me yeah. that gets me into a new place? It's not about you. But, right. you know, when you're in this giving service mindset, a lot of, it does open up a lot of things. And then when it's time for you to can be contributed to working through that and saying like, how are the things in their lives and my life going to open up when I allow myself to be contributed to? Yeah. I'm practicing that. I'm a musician. We practice. You have to get practice. better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and especially when you look at like, the non-linear part of it all, right? Like, I don't think anybody's life ever follows, like, the exact linear path that you thought, oh, I'm going to pull off in high school, right? It's boring. Like, it's boring. It's boring. I mean, and maybe some people do. I just don't know very many of them. Um, but it's like, when you go back, you can really trace through, oh, I met this person who introduced me to this person, which got me to this thing. And all those pieces are so important because if you were missing one, you would never have gotten to that thing that you're like, yeah, I'm not really sure how I got here. Yeah. But when you trace it back, you're like, oh, these are all people along the way. Right. Yes. And when you're generous along the way, I, I'm a, I have a coachee who's a visual art student at Columbia. Uh-huh. And he's amazing. He's super introverted, like beautiful, but like I do a lot of the talking and asking questions. Right. And he really <laughs> thinks about it. But he is such an open hearted, beautiful person. And I said, you know, what are your goals for when you go back to school this year? He said, I really want to get out there and get out of the school bubble and really like enjoy New York and yeah. make connections. I was like, well, why do you want to do that? He's like, well, I know I, I, I like bigger Instagram following. I was like, is that really it? <laughs> like, that's not He's it. like, no, it's not really it. It's the idea that other people are creating things and I could be really excited about that. And if I'm just in a bubble, I was like, okay, well, now we're talking about something different right so how do you approach a conversation meeting somebody out there what are you going to say what are you going to ask like oh i hadn't thought about that it's like that's why we're practicing (laughs) but also i was like what if you came in a generous spirit and you know if you're interested in a job or internship maybe you don't ask that first thing but you kind of like get curious about them right you see how you might be able to you know learn about what they're doing and then naturally some connections come up or you know i have some spare time could I come help you with something? And then they remember you as the generous person, not as the kid looking for a job, right? Or a bigger Instagram following. And I'm, I'm just teasing. I'm, I'm right. exaggerating here. But he was like, that is such a different way of thinking about meeting new people. It's like, takes exactly. so much of the pressure off of it right? too. Because then maybe you'll be enchanted. 
or maybe they'll be enchanted by you, but not because you're selling yourself, but because you're being authentic yeah. and you're being generous. I think the more we're in community, the more generous we can be, the better it is for everybody. We really lift all of our, our boats because we're not the same people doing the same things. No, there's really no downside to being generous. Not at all. And I think it's the ability to receive other people's generosity and then when you're giving it, giving it in a really, you know, true fashion. Like this is, oh, this is, I'm excited about this. Let me give you this. Right. And that, that makes the community just better and better. Yeah. And it's a way to practice receiving. <laughs> <laughs> so we are practicing the receiving in November. We can start early. <laughs> we can practice before our practice. That's right. <laughs> So our final question on this podcast is always um, the word comadres is what mothers and godmothers call each other. It's a relationship built on complete trust and sisterhood and knowing someone has your back and supports you fully. Uh, Tell us about one woman in your life that plays the role of comadre, who she is, what she does, what does she mean to you? Well, I get chills just thinking about it, but my big sister, she's really that person for me. She's always looking out for me and um she's made the world so safe for me to be crazy experimental girl (laughs) right (laughs) like she she is so smart and such a badass and she really like she taught me to read when I was two because it was boring I was boring (laughs) I was boring so she's opened up so much um possibility for me and she's always somebody who I could be in this imaginative space together. We created entire worlds and entire games and rituals. And, you know, we had this space together where I was always feeling safe and encouraged and happy. And I always wanted to be like her. Um, and we haven't, we lived for a while. Um, we overlapped in our time in New York. So we got to see each other quite often. And mm-hmm. that's still something. And sometimes we go on sister trips abroad and, um, I just love her so much. And she's always been such a role model for me. I always wanted to be like her, but I think what's neat is when you're adults, like you just have this different kind of connection and care for one another. And I don't see her as often as I'd like because she's in Illinois and I'm here, (laughs) but when we get together, it's like no time has passed. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of women I've met in Miami who say to people like, Okay, so I lived in New York, I lived in DC, I'm from the Midwest originally, I came mm-hmm. to Miami, I totally hated it at first, and then I realized this is a place where if you're creative and you're passionate and you're willing to do work, you can do a lot in a short amount of time. Yeah. But when Miami really became home, it was because of the people. Because this is a place that welcomes people to be creative. Yeah, it's not saying we don't do it that way. Yeah, you can't. Who do you think you are? Like, <laughs> Miami is one creative place. <laughs> it's the Wild West. It right? is. But I think, you know, especially finding a group, um, seeing what everybody's up to, and being able to be part of this community that celebrates each other, that sense like we're not trying to prove anything to anybody. We're just being authentically who we are and sharing of ourselves generously and also receiving generously. Um, of each other it's just the kind of place I want to be in and I feel like Miami is that for me and a big part of it is Las Comadres so you know thank you yeah (laughs) great job everybody (laughs) this is so great it is and you make it great thank you for making it great as well so where can we find you where are your socials uh any events you have coming up let me know Cool. Uh, well, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity again to, to chat and share and learn and be contributed to. Um, I'm on uh, Instagram and Facebook, Cultured Innovations, Cultured with a D. And I'm also on Twitter, Cultured Innov. It was too long, innovations. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, and of course, the Radical Receiving is happening November 1st through 30th. And that's going to be an experiment. It's going to be really fun take no more than 10 or 15 minutes per day perfect and yeah all right well we will have links to all of that in the show notes so you can follow martha wherever she is and she is always up to really really cool things thank you so much for being on the podcast we really appreciate it thanks for having me las comadres is a community of entrepreneurial women reclaiming sisterhood and uplifting each other in life and in business Music for the Las Comadres podcast provided by Afro Beta. Learn more about our community and join us at lascomadres.club. Two